Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at. Oh man. All right. Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at eclipsing binaries to see how we can determine the size and mass of these stars involved in the eclipsing. Well, first of all, we can identify the light coming from the various stars, the intensity of the light, when we look at certain bands of light. We have the 1.6 micrometer band, which would be strong for red stars and relatively weak for blue stars. And I say relatively weak relative to the total intensity. We can look at the V-band and the B-band. The V-band has the longer wavelengths, so they would be stronger, relatively speaking, again, for the red, orange, or yellow stars. The B-band is relatively stronger. The intensity of that band, we can then expect that to be a much hotter star, like a white or a blue star. Coupled with using the Stefan Boltzmann law, where the amount of light per unit time or energy per unit time received from a star is equal to the emissivity constant, the Boltzmann constant, the area surface area of the star, and the temperature to the fourth power, and coupled with Wien's law that relates the, the highest uh, intensity of wavelength that we receive from a star to the temperature, we could then use that and the color luminosity relationship of the HR diagram to try and determine the kind of stars that we're dealing with. Obviously, when we have the color of the star determined by using certain filters, we can then pretty well approximate using the HR diagram what type of star and what size star we're looking at. Another way we, which we can determine the size of star is to realize how much the light is being dimmed. Now notice, when the small star is behind the large star, we have a dimming of that light, and so we can then determine how much light reduction is there because the, lights, the small star is no longer being seen. Here, this is the reduction when the small star is in front of the large star, and a lot more light is being held back. But then if we add the reduction of the small star to this, we could then see this would be the total reduction if no light were received from the small star that's in front of the large star. And so based upon that, we can also determine what size star we're dealing with. Another thing that we can do is figure out, once we know the orbital radius and we know the period, the period is of course easy to calculate, but if we can somehow measure the orbital radius, then we can determine how fast the star moves, the small star moves, around the large star, we can find the tangential velocity of its orbit, and then we can determine the diameter of the small star by measuring how long it takes for the star to disappear completely behind the large star, or for the star to disappear in sense completely in front of the large star, either way. So we can see how long that takes, and so we mul multiply that time times the velocity to get the diameter of the small star, or the amount of time that it spends behind or in front of the large star, we can then determine the diameter of the large star by multiplying the tangential velocity of the small one times the time that it spends hidden by the large star. So those are some of the techniques that we use to try and determine the mass and the size of the stars in eclipsing binaries. Of course, you're going to want to see some examples of how we exactly do that to get more of a feel for it, but at least at this point you have some good ideas of the different types of techniques used to come up with the size, the mass and the size of the various stars in eclipsing binaries. And that's how it's done.